fantastic. Well, first of all, I want to thank you all, and I appreciate everybody coming out today. This is our second Guided Pathways Summit that we've had here at IBC. Um, my name is Brent Monty. I'm one of the co-coordinators of the Guided Pathways Project here at IBC. Today we've got a student panel. I'd like to introduce the panel. First of all, thank you guys for coming in. Come in, NMR, have a seat, please. Um, and so what I'd like to do, first of all, is if I could get all of you um, to introduce yourselves, just say who you are, um, kind of what your stage is here at IVC. We'll take a minute after that, I'll, I'll talk to the audience a little bit, but just to kind of get to know who you are. My name is Robert Buchanan. Um, I've been going to school for about three years now, and I'm taking Math 310 here, which is really uh, awesome course. I actually enjoy math for the first time. What class is that? Ever. What's uh, math intro into st statistics. Uh, um, my name is Amar Albalas, and uh, I'm studying bioengineering. Uh, I've been at IVC for uh, about a year now. This is my second year. Um, and, uh, what courses I'm taking? Here? Yeah. Um, I'm taking a few. I'm taking Physics 4B, uh, Bio 16, which is Cell Bio, uh, Organic Chemistry Part 1, uh, then Computer Science 37. Um, yeah. Hello, my name is Raina Kerr. I've been here since 2015. I'm majoring in environmental geography. And right now, I'm taking Geography 2, 20, and then Statistics. Hello, I'm Tracy Johnston. Um, I just started at IVC for the fall. Uh, I'm currently enrolled in Writing 1, uh, Writing 302, and then I think it's Writing 181. Um, I'm also enrolled in Spanish 1 and Intermediate Algebra. Um, my end goal is to get enough uh, transfer things out of the way so that I can transfer to a UC or wherever um, after this. Uh, my name is Zach Klutz. I'm working towards a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. Currently I'm taking four classes, uh, biology lab, biology one, uh, trigonometry, and uh, closely related to mechanical engineering, history, photography. Um, <laughs> Uh, this is my third semester at IVC. I'm obviously returning uh, to, I'm not necessarily returning, I never went to college, so <laughs> I'm just starting college at a late day in my uh, uh, life, but uh, that's my story. Okay, I'm Christy Horn, and I am a returning student. I've been back to college for the last three years. I've been at IVC. This is my third semester. I am currently taking Math 310, which is interesting intro to statistics and my goal is to I should be transferring next fall still unsure where but for to finish my bachelor's degree in English literature great well thank you guys could you guys welcome our student panel please? all right and I wanted you guys to introduce yourselves just so you could get a little bit on the microphone get relax a little bit just remember to breathe everything's gonna be okay um, but as the moderator, there's a couple of things, a couple of ground rules I want to set, um, just so that we're all on the same page. Um, first of all, just realize we're here to listen to the students. Uh, we're not here to argue with the students or, or tell them anything else. It's just to get their inputs, because it's their, their voice that we want to hear today. Um, please mute your phones. So if you have your phone turned on, please mute that. I always have a problem with that in my classes. <laughs> if you do have a question, or a follow-up question for one of the panelists, please raise your hand. Um, if there's important things that you see today in today's panel, and we're assuming there's gonna be plenty of them, please take a note of it, bring it back to your schools. Obviously, everybody wasn't able to come here today. Um, so if you do have things you wanna share with your colleagues, make sure to take a note so that you, you'll know what to say when you get back to your schools. Um, and with that, I'm going to go on with some questions for the panelists. Um, first question that I have, how do you guys decide on what courses to actually take? And we'll leave this kind of open to the panelists. If you have something that you want to add, please do so. Lamar, you want to start us off? Yeah. Um, well, most of my courses, I just go through assist, and that's usually all I use. But yeah, that's it. That's okay. It. So assist will tell you which classes transfer to which schools. Right. And 
Right. Excellent. Like for UCLA, Berkeley, wherever you want to go, it tells you the list. I think it's for only for Cal States and UCs though. I'm not sure if it's for like private. Right, right. But yeah. In general, I see um, <coughs> the list of classes that I can take and some of them clear a certain area. I have four or five choices. I, I read the, you know, the, uh, the description and if it's something that's most interesting to me, then sure. I'll take it. Although I found that many times when I actually arrive at the class, the instructor isn't really talking to what the description was on mm. the course catalog. So, uh, and I see other people talk about that kind of thing, and you know, I see those kids drop or, or whatever. Gotcha. But I think I could pretty much take anything for the 18 weeks, so I, I, I don't <laughs> want to recommit to another one and go through the same process. So I just gotcha. Uh, my personal experience is <clears throat> I've worked very closely with Eric Garcia, the veterans counselor. Um, I pretty much do all of that kind of. Uh, decisions talking with him mm -hmm. and we look through assist like uh, Omar had said and really kind of try to plan out how my time here is going to look um, specifically because there are um, issues with students not completing entire coursework at a given community college when transferring um, I've recently had you know friends that have tried to transfer and were not able to initially because they had calculus courses that weren't all in a series of classes were not taken at the same institution. Oh. So um, navigating that is uh, obviously important. So I work very closely with the counselors and that staff. Excellent. So um, when I first started going here, I was just kind of doing the same thing, taking classes as I, you know, oh, this sounds fun. But um, <laughs> I actually took a semester off, and then when I came back, I um, started applying for other things. So now I'm in the EOPS and CalWORKs uh, office, and now I'm working really close with um, Parisa, who's my counselor. And after having someone tell me, okay, you know, looking at assist together um, and saying these are the classes that you're going to need for this school versus this school, it's really easy for me now to narrow it down of what schools I want to transfer to. Um, working at the transfer center here at IVC, I do see a lot of students who really don't know what classes to take or sometimes just go off of assist, which is okay, but then you come down to, well, now I'm trying to transfer. Um, and we have a lot of students who aren't able to um, just because they're taking the wrong courses and then have to wait you know, another year or a semester to try to transfer over to whatever school they want to go to. So I personally think it's really important to not only see a counselor, but also go to the transfer center as well if you're um, wanting to transfer to a different school. So that way you can sit down with the counselor um, and they'll tell you exactly what classes to take for what school you want to get into. And we'll tell you what um, courses are transferable or not. Well, and Randy, you bring up a good issue and I want to ask you specifically, but anybody else that has some thoughts about that. Do you see students taking classes when they begin their programs and then they find out later, oh, this course doesn't transfer where I want it to, or I have a lot of transferable classes from assist, but not necessarily the right courses to fill the, fulfill the right requirements? Um, I think it's a little bit of both that we have. Sometimes we'll get students who, you know, unfortunately, like, didn't, you know, have seen different counselors is another issue. So if you're seeing, like, five different people, they'll, you know, give you five different things and of advice and sometimes they're not all on the same page and so we get students who are taking the wrong courses or like you said are just you know have all these different units to transfer but those classes aren't going to transfer to what their major is or gotcha. what they're trying to go into yeah anybody else have any issues with I was fortunate in the fact that when I started I had a different plan because of thinking that I had to take algebra to and then my transferable class, which was either um, liberal arts math or um, math for elementary school teachers. And algebra is not a strong suit. Algebra has always been a struggle and probably my biggest roadblock to transferring. And speaking with the counselor was actually helpful in the fact that I feel, but in a sense, I spoke to a different counselor didn't hear this information, went back in, 
and got, and I, and I don't recall the counselor's name, but he had advised me with the intro to stats and statistics class that that is a route that would be really good for me because oh, they're trying to direct students that are non-STEM students into that direction. So I was fortunate with the second counselor that I met for that reason. So I think you're not, you're right. It's, it's if the counselors, it would be helpful if they were all on the same page. Well, and I'm not sure that students have even an opportunity to speak with counselors. And if so, a lot of times we have part-time counselors. Exactly. Just because yeah, different constraints that we have. Um, Andrew, would you like to introduce yourself real quickly? Yeah, and yeah. Um, my name is Andrew, and I just transferred from <laughs> IVC. This, uh, I'm a new student at Cal State Fullerton as a junior, as a transfer student. Um, I moved from Texas, but I'm originally from here. Um, and I started out in Texas at a community college for one year. And then when I moved out here, I met with a counselor. And it was a bit tricky because some of my credits didn't transfer which was the tough part, and I had a lot of you know, stress on me, but um, I was able to get to the right counselor, and his name was Tuan. He's a transfer student, uh, transfer counselor here at IVC, and he's basically like, has helped me the whole way through to get me to Cal State Fullerton, to get me on the right path, the classes, and everything like that, so. Excellent, cool, right. thank, thank you, you. welcome. Thank you. Um, here, another question for the group. What do you think prevents students from taking the classes they need? You, anybody? Yes. Um, I know that for upper division classes, like my physics 4B class, um, a lot of students have to wait just because there's not enough courses. Like there's two. Enough sections offered. Yeah. Um, there's only two courses offered for physics 4B, and one of my friends, like, he had to wait a whole year before he could take the class that I'm in right now. Fortunately, I have uh, the, like, the priority registration, so I, I was able to get it and not have to wait, but a lot of people are actually having to wait because there's not enough spaces for gotcha. students, and yeah. yeah. Any other issues that anybody run into? Um, I know it's changing now, but the assessment testing that was previously mandatory, um, I, I had taken up to calculus in high school, so I've done pretty advanced math, um, it's been nine years since then, so uh, with the assessment testing, it put me down into algebra, uh, I forgot the intermediate algebra, I forgot the course number. Um, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that has those kind of issues. Um, so <laughs> um, when you're placed in that lower class, if and this is something I didn't follow up on personally of like getting those high school transcripts in, but it was kind of laid out like, let's take the class that you know you're gonna do well in rather than risk doing poorly in a more advanced class, um, just due to that time frame and the assessment testing and things like that. So, um, like not, obviously that's changing with the assessment testing, but if there were more, if there were classes that were more tailored to allowing people who were not, who have done those advanced things, kind of like a summary class, if you will, mm -hmm. if there was some something like that, and obviously it has to meet uh, credentialing requirements and stuff like that. So I don't know if that's something that could be done, but that's what me personally, what I would have liked to have had, is yeah. to be able to take a summary course so that way I could get back up to that level quickly. Because the, the issue becomes, if I were to take every class, it would take me about a year to get to back to that calculus. Right. And that doesn't meet with what my goals are. Sure. Yeah, and, and the <clears throat> fact that you bring up that idea, those, those are exactly the types of things that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Because we kind of get stuck in what we think works and what we know and we understand. But we really want to hear from the students to see what the issues are affecting you and any ideas that you have for improvement. I have um, similar. Uh, experience as far as the assessment testing I was pretty frustrated with it um, you know I hadn't been in school for 20 plus years I've been breathing all that time <laughs> <hadn't changed. laughs> I'm pretty good at breathing but math hadn't changed either but I wasn't practicing it so um, i would forgotten a few things however it placed me also in algebra but I signed up for that class and I got the syllabus 
and uh, got on my math lab, which is, you know, seems to be a lot of math classes used. And at, before the first day of class, I had 50% of the homework done. Wow. And it, it was just, maybe I forgot a negative sign or whatever on, yeah. on the math assessment test. So it sent me all the way down there. Um, then I took, retook the test and it still said that I was only eligible for the next class. And I'm like, this is kind of not right. So I put myself into like Alex online mm -hmm. and uh, pre-studied um, my trigonometry in hopes that I could take the assessment test again so I could test into pre-calculus gotcha. for the semester. When I went to go, and this is the advice that I got from my counselor uh, as far as like you could test yourself again and again, and my teacher had said that as well. So I purposed to do this, and then I went to take the t assessment test again, and they said you can't take it again. Oh. Mm -hmm. So now I'm stuck with, okay, I have to wait till next semester to either take it again, or I need to take a, a class now, which guarantees me to get into the class next semester. Gotcha. So um, I'm taking uh, sorry trigonometry now, but again, it feels like a free ride class because I know the content, I self-studied. So it feels like there should be beyond this assessment test, beyond reviewing um, my transcripts from 25 years ago, mm. I mean, there should be a communication that can be had with the dean or the, the head of the department say, look, I'm doing all this extra self-study. You should have less of a risk of me failing this class that I'm asking to be put in. Because right. um, I feel like I'm ready to be in calculus yeah. or at the very least pre-calculus, but there's no pathway for me to do it without all of this red tape going back. And I know my high school transcripts aren't great because it was 25 years ago. And right. I, I was just like, I, I don't think I'm going to college. So I didn't put a lot of focus on it. So my GPA in high school is not a 4.0 like it is here. Yeah. You know, so I have a different outlook on, on education at the moment. So you're assessing my academic career based on a maybe an immature place that I was at when I was younger versus where I'm at now. And the other, the other follow-up to that is not only does it waste time, but it also wastes students' money. And if you've got people that maybe don't qualify for financial aid but are still, you know, right at that level where it's still hard to make things work, sure. that could be the difference between staying enrolled and not. Yeah. You know, if you have an extra year to get to the classes you need to transfer, I mean, that's, that's a fairly substantial financial investment. Right. Yeah, and I know you have questions later about being, I think even your next question is about trying to, or next section is about being two years in, and yeah, transferring. Right. It's physically impossible for me to do that because all the classes that I need to take cascade off of my math classes. Gotcha. And if I can't get into calculus, I can't take my physics uh, 4A, B, and so on and so forth, as well as the engineering classes. So my, my, uh, my pathway shows three years minimum. That's if I can get into all those classes based on you know, what we've already heard today, and taking 15 hour, uh, credit hours per semester, including 10 hours per semester during the summer. So I have a huge daunting uphill path forward to me, and I'm probably gonna have to add a fourth year just to be able to get through it, because I'm sure there's gonna be some class that I can't get into, which is gonna push all the other classes gotcha. into another semester, and I can't finish by that certain date so I can transfer. And not only that, that feeds off of the problem that Omar brought up as well, where you've got students that are taking a long time to get to those courses, and then they can't because there's not enough sections. Right. So. Yeah. Um, for me, great points. Uh, lack of math has never been a forte of mine. I've always it's always been a challenge. Um, up until last semester, I'd taken uh, beginning algebra. Saddleback three semesters in a row, so I was at the point, and I didn't pass, I was at the point where I had to take it outside of the college district, which would have sucked. And then last semester they said, oh, by the way, this pathway 310 to um, math 10 yeah, statistics. is available. And for the first time, like, like I said, the first time, not the, the <laughs> his teaching style, as well as it's a lot of peer-to-peer -peer group um, building, reaffirming what I, what I'm learning by teaching it and showing other classmates um, has really helped. Uh, I, I really enjoy math, and it's, it's fun. So. Good. Uh, 
just get back to your actual question. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, hey, labor guys, use the mics. They're, they're for the uh, cameras. I know we can all hear everybody, but just if you could lean into it, it'll help the, the recording for later. Thanks, everybody. Um, your question is specifically about students um, not taking the classes that they need. And I talk to a lot of students, and, and I feel like sometimes I hear students say, I'm going to leave this class till the end, because it's not something that I'm passionate about, one. Two, I've been told that I'm not really good at that, so I'm just going to leave that to the end. But what I see happen is they end up leaving a lot of those classes to the end, right? So they get through all the stuff that is easy and fun for them and that they're interested in, and then they now they have two semesters ahead of them of all stuff that they hate, or they've been told that they hate. Gotcha. So they look at that like, that is not a hill I want to climb. Yeah. Whereas if they get some advice to say, take one of those classes <laughs> per semester yeah. up front, that way you're, the, the sunset of your career here at IDC is a fun, easy right. uh, exit as opposed to a challenge. Right. Mm -hmm. Christy, did you? Just uh, recently I've been hearing about um, priority registration, and that is something I haven't heard about. That isn't so, in, just as far as counselor, I, I don't even know how to get that. What? And so that's yeah. one of those things I would like to know how, what, how that's a possibility because again, right. the classes I need are a little harder to get. Right, and that's something that we can discuss. Okay. It's usually, it's state mandated what the priority list is of who gets priority and who doesn't. Okay. Um, but we can definitely talk about that All later. Right. Anybody else have any insights on that before? Yeah, please, uh, Raina. I was gonna um, say, if my mom <laughs> hadn't told me to take my general education first um, and then take all my major prep, it would have been like a lot. I probably would have still been here for probably another two years, which is a long time. Like I said, I've been here since 2015, but um, I think it also really depends on you know, like you said, like not only the material and, you know, trying to get the classes that you need. Um, it's just about like getting, also getting the help that you need, right. um, getting like the right professor, unfortunately, sometimes yeah. um, the way that a teacher teaches isn't something that's gonna work with you. And right. I think um, that also can lead students to wanting to drop the class or not finish or not take the class because sure. it's just, hard like you know let's say a professor teaches a certain way and that's a way that you don't learn well and that's the only teacher who's teaching the class that semester right. and so it's you know setting that student up to fail because they just learn a different way or they need a different way to have the material taught to them and sometimes that can get in the way of students like you said waiting till the last minute to take the class or just not taking it right. um, let's go on to the next question um, what do you think would increase student retention and completion in classes? You guys have thoughts on what might aid in that? Um, similar to what we had kind of the last question gotten into is kind of the culture of the classroom and the culture of the way that the teacher uh, presents the material. Um, given the classes that I've taken so far, my, my Spanish and writing classes are both um, engaging and uh, you know really draw my interest in even though it's material that's not necessarily new um, with the Spanish class the writing class is all new stuff for me but the math class that I'm taking it is intermediate algebra it is high school algebra it's not you know anything advanced and complicated but still there's students that don't haven't seen this information before and when a student sits there and asks, like, why do I need to know this algebra? <laughs> and the teacher decides to say, well, there's certain things as being an adult that you don't like to do, but you have to learn how to do it. That student's not going to take that well. Sure. And, Worst answer ever. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> and it's not. But so true. <laughs> right. It is true. It is a life lesson. Yeah. It is true, it is a life lesson that we have to learn as, you know, as coming into an adult, but it's a much more effective answer to say, you know, we don't, we may not necessarily use this till you get to higher math, but here's how it would be applied. Here's what the, you know, why we're doing this. And you don't have to go into like the specifics of it, but like specifically with math, 
when those things are addressed that way, it, it shuts students off. Sure. Yeah. I think two things. One, having, um, trying to have the professor, I think class interaction is great. And having the professor seek out that student that maybe isn't engaging and just having that personal connection, <clears throat> excuse me, I think that helps. Two, having some sort of mentoring program on campus where a student that may want to interact with other students can sign up for giving a new student um, some sort of just personal connection. Mm -hmm. Hey, here's where the, you know, here's where you can grab coffee, here's where the math lab is, just to make them feel more engaged. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so um, I wanted to mention that like for classes like my physics class or, you know, like biology, there's a lot of information in such a small time frame that we have to get through so much material every day and I feel that for students who are really struggling to keep up, um, I feel that like maybe they're, like somebody mentioned like a program after class or something like that. And I know for math they have the tutoring center, maybe something in that sense would help gotcha. students in their courses. No, that's yeah. a great idea. Let's switch gears a little bit. Um, let's talk about majors. Specifically, how do you decide on a major? And at what point did you all, if you have, decide on your current majors? Yeah. Um, I mean, how I decided on my major was uh, just knowing what I'm passionate about. Basically, what do I like doing? Um, so I chose hospitality as, well, communication studies as my major, but focusing on hospitality. Um, currently, I'm working at the Monarch Beach Resort, so I'm getting that kind of experience in person to know if I actually like it, which I love and um, it's great, and that's what my counselor told me, just what, you, what you're really passionate about and knowing what's gonna get you through community colleges as soon as possible as well. I think as far as when you have a first-time college student coming in, it's really important to have a program like Guided Pathways because a lot of times they've been raised as far as this is what you will do, this is what your, your end result should be, this is the career you should go into, which that is usually a epic fail for most humans. But as far as, I mean, some people are, are, are very self, um, they know what they wanna do, or they, they know what they're passionate about, but nine times out of 10, people aren't like that. So I think, uh, as far as myself, I've always wanted to teach, I've always had a passion for English, literature especially, reading. Um, but I still, when I had started college initially, was still unsure, okay, is that the right thing to do? I think when you, like I said, when you have assessments or people to speak to you and kind of pick your brain on what, what, what your passion is, what your interest in, and get you thinking, because not everybody is, is able to do that. So I think that's a great, great tool. I don't know if I'm gonna give you much help on this question. Uh, I had the benefit of 25 years in the workforce, doing development engineering, working with mechanical engineers, working in designing products. I mean, I have, I already have the job with the, the degree required. Oh, gotcha. uh, I just don't have the degree, so I'm kind of a little bit of an anomaly and I'm backwards. So deciding what my major was, was, was well, I'm already doing this job. I'm already passionate about this yeah. job. I already know the real life work experience of right. doing this job. Um, so it was easy for me to pick, and I picked before I arrived here, yeah, well, while I'm here. And right? the good part is you're representative of a certain proportion of the students here. And we have to understand some students come in, they know exactly what they want to do, and, and so that's Yeah, I think that's my counselor helpful. when I came in, she, she literally quote unquote said, you did all my job for me. Because <laughs> I already had my classes all mapped out, okay. I had them all chosen. Yeah. She, she just needed to go, oh, that meets the requirement. So, perfect. Approved. Yeah. Right. Tracy? Um, I'm in a similar boat to him where I I took nine years from high school to now. Um, so I kind of knew what I wanted to do, but part of what is happening kind of as I see it in society is we have that student debt is becoming a huge issue. So students are starting to look at colleges and higher education as kind of a what's, you know, what's the point of this? And what I think 
we all need to work on is trying to get people to have those experiences to where they can pick a major that not only allows them to do something that they enjoy and something that's fulfilling, but also allows them to make enough money to where they're not slaving away, you know, it's something. So I think part of that and part of the solution to that is like starting at the most basic level of community college is potentially finding uh, local businesses that are able to do like internships and things like that. And I don't know if that's something that exists here. I haven't explored that. But if that is not, if something like that doesn't exist, I think that should be where a lot of attention is put because it would allow students to, you know, go work at some technology thing, you know, go work at a doctor's office, go actually see what it's like rather than being sold this kind of glorified version of whatever it is that they think they want. And if that's, if that's not done, I foresee that becoming an issue as we continue to go on where students are having so much debt for this major that may or may not benefit them. So I'm kind of on the opposite end. <laughs> I came to IVC right after I graduated high school. Um, and I was first majoring in theater arts because I personally felt I wasn't smart enough. I've always loved biology and like nature and that side of things. Um, but yeah, I've always felt like, okay, well, I'm not good at math. I'm going to have to get into calculus. Like, I can't, you know, even solve a basic algebraic function. So I went into theater thinking, okay, this is what I want to do. Like, it's easy for me. I should continue to do this. But then, um, like I said, luckily, like I was taking all my GEs first, and then I actually switched my major last summer into um, environmental geography after taking a class and realizing, okay, like, yeah, I'll have to do some math, but the importance of what my major is going to do for the environment, what it's going to do for my own personal benefit, as well as that's basically what made me change my major and say, um, yeah, I can do this, you know, having the support here from IBC, having the tutoring center, the counselors, like the transfer center, um, you know, EOPS, CalWORKs, having them like tell you, hey, you can do this is something that's really important. I think a lot of students kind of don't know that the support is there if they just kind of went out and looked for it. And so having that support, I had changed my major, um, you know, and having a good professor realizing, oh, this is a good subject that I really love doing is really important and you know like you're seeing a lot of students sometimes major in things that will bring them into a lot of debt or because they think they have to do this they're going to do this major and then realize they don't like it later on and then after being in so much debt then they're like oh well now I have to go through with it because I can't change my mind so um, I think it is important especially here on campus we have career exploration and sitting down with a counselor exploring all your options, what do you like, what you don't like, seeing where I should go with my career, with my um, major, can really help students to decide, maybe you shouldn't major in this, maybe you can major in something else that's gonna benefit you instead of, you know, like you were saying, like going down a path because you think that you have to. And hey, Amar, how and when did you decide on your major? Um, well, I decided in high school. Um, I've always known, well, originally I was biology, but I realized that today, if you're a biology major, either you're going to be a doctor or like there's not much else. <laughs> so I decided to do biomedical engineering, which expands the field. So if I do not want, if I don't want to be a doctor down the road, I can apply myself to many different fields. Uh, I wasn't talking smack in biology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, and uh, yeah. Great, thank you. Robert? Uh, for me, I, I didn't have direction when I got out of the military, so it was just, well, this seems like a good idea. Um, I got sober in 2016, and that's really, that really helped a whole lot of things, especially focus. Um, and now I'm, I'm majoring in drug and alcohol counseling, so math isn't a huge necessity for that, <laughs> but it is a requirement, so just trying to push through the challenge. I appreciate that. This one we're going to handle a little bit differently. You guys have the questions. Um, but it's on a scale of one to five. And what I'm going to do, we're just going to go down the list and just give me your number first. And then we'll open it up if anybody has insights they want to share. But on a scale of one to five, one being the least important and five being the most important, 
how important it is, is it to you to complete your degree or transfer requirements within two years? Uh, five. Four. Five. Five. One. Five. Two. Okay. Excellent. And then if you guys want to expand on that, sure. why, why do you give it the number you do? Um, five because, I mean, I just had a short-term goal and a long-term goal. I mean, just getting out of community, community college in general. Um, I mean, I thought I knew what I wanted to do. I thought I wanted to be, be a business major, but then again, I didn't know how much math was going to go into it, accounting, and then economics, all this other stuff that you really don't need, but it's a requirement, which I understand. Um, so that's why I kind of chose this, something that's more compatible towards me, what I can do, and um, that's why I chose communication studies. Um, but other than that, I just, I feel like it's, I mean, we're all going to be, I, I was a five-year student. I'm, I think I'm going to be a five-year student. I did community college in three years, so that's a good goal. Um, but other than that, the faster the better. Excellent. And when you, when you respond, if you could say your number again, so just so that we put it back in. Okay, my number is four, and more for personal reasons. Huh? Um, being that I'm returning to college, I, it, there's not a, a time set for me, but it's my own time set for myself. Excellent. Uh, I was five. Uh, I, I have a sunset. <laughs> coming up. <laughs> I'm older than a lot of the teachers that I'm uh, taking classes with. So I'd like to get done right. with this before <laughs> so I can get the benefit out of it. Um, uh, but I, given what I've already said about my misplacement, I feel, in the math process, um, even if I would have been placed in calculus, I'd love for anybody to sit down with me and show me how it'd be possible to take the classes that I have to take to do it in two years. I mean, it would be 20 plus credits per regular semester, and summers would be 15 credits easy. There's physically no possible way for that to happen. And I hear people say, oh, yeah, you do this in two years. I'm like, show me. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. And I go to school full time, or uh, I have a full time job, obviously. Um, I'm in a little bit better benefit than, you know, talking about school debt because. Because I do have a very good job, they pay for the school, <laughs> so I, I don't, I'm not occurring that part of it. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I guess I would just like to be able to get to the classes that are. Yeah. I, I'm not even taking any engineering classes for the first two years. That's, yeah. and I'm not even getting to what I'm passionate about. Right. Right. Um, I was also a five, and I think, again, the the fact that students are being, you know, they have. Some students can't afford to pay for staying here for a lot longer. It is community college, it is less expensive, but it is still expensive compared to, you know, compared to not. And if you have, if there's, for whatever reason, you have to go into debt here and then you're adding that to your university debt, like that's, that's a large portion. So getting, streamlining the process as much as possible is extremely important. Um, I said one, and the reason is because, like you were saying, it is impossible to, almost, almost impossible to get out of here in two years. Um, it's really sad that there is that stigma that you can get out of community college in two years, but there's a lot of, you know, unless you want to be like a full-time student taking 15 plus units a semester, um, that's really difficult. And so for me personally, um, I'm also a mom, so I can't put in, you know, 40 plus hours into school like I would like to and get out of here as fast as I can. So for me, um, it's just not something that I want to pressure myself to do gotcha. to get out of here as fast as I can because I don't want to set myself up to fail. Um, I think three years is probably, you know, the average of how long it does take students to get out of here. And I think if we continue to push the whole, yeah, you know, you can get out of here in two years if you want to devote your entire life to school at the moment. But um, I think three years saying it's probably going to take about three years unless you want to take, you know, 15 plus units a semester, you know, which you also have to multiply the amount of hours that you're going to have to put in those classes. Sure. So, you know, it's like it's a full time thing and a lot of students right. can't do full time school. Um, so for me, uh, I came right out of high school, so yeah. I've always been full time. My only priority was work and school. Uh, and then uh, so. I'm already on track to transfer. I'm already applying right now. This is my second year, so by next year I'll be at wherever I get accepted into. Um, I'm sorry, were you a five also? Oh, I was a five, yes. 
So, um, anyways, yeah, I mean, okay. that's it. I was at two, and I just look at school like Mr. Brady, take it a day at a time. Uh, to me, no one, my education is like climbing a mountain. No one really cares how long it takes. I'm, I will get to the top. So. Excellent. Well, I appreciate that. And, and obviously, there's a lot of differences between the students. And that's, I am sure, very representative of our student body at large. Yeah, Zach? I, I find it kind of interesting that you have this question and um, relating to, back to other questions that are, you know, how did you come about you know, when in your career? Did, I came into this incredibly focused. Right. And I don't see a pathway to do it in two years. I can't imagine somebody coming into the college arena and me, you know, I'm going to take my general electives and figure out what I want to do later. Like, I don't know how that would work to even get. So gotcha. I don't understand the connection of these questions as far as are you trying to figure out is there a marketing role that we can market and say, hey, you can come here and get it through in two years, or are you trying to get to a reality based? Can you get yeah, and it's more, <laughs> it's more a reality-based thing. What do we need to do to make it possible to the students that do want to graduate in two years or transfer in two years um, with the knowledge that not everybody does, but figuring out what, what we can do to, to help you guys achieve your goals? I'm sure there's some majors that you could go through in two years, but the, the, you know, right. the mass, vast majority of them probably not. Yeah, no. Yeah, I see your point. Well, and going, that kind of goes back to what we had said earlier, though. If your assessment testing is putting students sure. low enough where they can't get to the, to the classes they need to transfer in those two years, that's a significant hurdle. And, and then on top of that, right. you've got students that can't take the courses because they don't have enough right. sections. Yeah. So I would say that's probably a place to look. Sure. No, absolutely. No, we, yeah, we, we definitely hear what you guys are saying. Um, I'm going to skip down to number four because of time. Um, what do you think we could do to encourage students to get their associate's degree before they leave? Because we've got a lot of students that we know their goal is to get a four-year degree and transfer out of here and go to a, a university. Um, but we're, we feel very strongly that it's important to get an associate's degree so that you have a degree no matter what. If something happens um, later before you get your bachelor's degree, is there anything that you think we could do to encourage students to actually get their associate's degree before they transfer. Yeah, Mark? Um, so for the associates, one of the reasons why I'm not going to be getting my associates is because by the time I transfer, I'm not even going to, like by the time I would get my associates, I would already be in the school that I wanted to go to. So coming back to get my associates doesn't really make sense. Oh, so you're leaving before yeah, you so like if I were those to, requirements. If I were to apply, I'm pretty sure you apply now or spring, beginning of spring, and then you get it at the end. And then, um, and it's like by that time, I can't even put that in my applications, so why would I, gotcha. you know, need it? Gotcha. That's it, yeah. Yeah, I, I'd say a, a big part of it is the value of it. What, I mean, when I leave here, I should be able to get an associate degree in physics and math, um, according to my counselor, but, and I probably will just, just because, why not? But beyond what I just said, what is the value? Like, it's gotcha. just, it's just a, to me, it's a paper on the wall, right? Uh, the other thing is, you know, you, you convince somebody, oh, as, as you framed it, you have this degree just in case, you know, you should have at least have a degree, right? Well, that is kind of the front of saying, well, what if you don't finish? And for me, I, I don't like putting that kind of negative bit about, because that just puts, plants the seed of, Failure, gotcha. right? Not success. Sure. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so for me, I'm actually doing an AAT, which is an associate's degree to transfer. Right. Or you can, if you're going to UC, you can do TAG, which is the same thing. So you're still going to get your associate's degree. You're still going to transfer um, at the same time. You would just apply for it the same time you would apply for associate's degree. So is there something that you think we could I think help students see the value in that? I think just more, I don't know, like some way to just let them know, like you can transfer and get your associate's degree at the same time, gotcha. following the same plans. If you're like, you know, maybe you'll have to take, for me, I had to take one more class just to get my mm -hmm. associates. So it's not really a big deal. So it's kind of knowledge. Me. Yeah, just the knowledge of saying, yeah, you can get your associate's degree, you can transfer at the same time. It still falls in your plan. Um, you know, we 
maybe that's a side on the career and transfer center where we need to like push it more because gotcha. we have a lot of students who don't know about that. Okay. And for me working there, I was able to realize, oh, well, I'm not changing my path. I'm not, you know, I'm only taking like one more class. Right. And so it's not something that was a big deal for me. Gotcha. But I think maybe um, when the freshmen do come on campus or when you guys are giving the tours mm -hmm. and stuff, letting them know like, hey, you know, you can get your associate degree and transfer in the same time if you just talk to the counselor and let them know you want that. So gotcha. then that way, um, side story, like my, my mom went to school and then she had me and she had to stop going to school. And so wanting to go back to work, she just had to have an AA to like work at a school front office like some some simple right. jobs that don't require math or it's just gotcha. checking in students they still want you to have an associate's degree mm -hmm. and so i think you know you don't want to look at well what if i do fail but i think gotcha. having that backup plan of okay if something happens to me if something happens to my family i have to stop school at right. least i still have that associate's degree and then Christy, you want to add something to add? Touching on just the same yeah. area is life happens. Um, when you are a returning student, you don't always have, sometimes your goals have to change depending on how life, you know, hits you, things do happen. And I think just, it's not, in turn, some people think of it as a piece of paper. My husband, he is not a get the AA. He was, went to a four year school, thought the AA was unnecessary. I have two daughters that I'm trying to tell them having that <laughs> having that AA is something it's a goal that you've achieved and it's sometimes when you're going through hard times in life that is going to give you that little build that little boost of confidence it's going to help you yeah. feel like yes I now will go back because I've achieved this goal now I want to achieve the next goal I just think if it were presented in that way by counseling by in like we said if it's only yeah. one class two classes you are, you're gaining knowledge, you're becoming more well-rounded, and I think that's kind of the goal of going to college in the first place is becoming a more well-rounded human. Right. So. Yeah, I, I'll just add on to the counselor aspect of it. I mean, I haven't worked with the entire counseling department, I've only worked with a couple counselors, but um, if it's truly important to you as administrators to get people to think about the associate degree, that should be something that the counselor's telling you about, mm -hmm. as opposed to my situation when I went in, I was like kind of as a closing conversation with my counselor is, so what associate's degree would I qualify for? Yeah. And then she had to go look up, I think you might be, I'm not <laughs> sure, <laughs> let me check this. And it turned in another 15 minute thing as opposed to, oh, here's your guided path, this right. is what you're gonna do. If you take this one more class, you'll, you'll qualify for this, now you have little milestone goals that you can achieve instead of thinking about this huge giant goal so you can take it off in bite size chunks. That should be more of the conversation that I would say would encourage people. So do. something mm -hmm. like, here's how you can get your degree and prepare you to transfer. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I see. Well, like um, Raina. Raina had said with the, the AA that also is a transfer, like that is not brought up. This is the first I had heard about it. And now I am focused on, I know what I want to do, but if you're, if you know, if you're a student that takes longer and switches between things, you can qualify for two or three AAs fairly mm -hmm. simply. So having that discussion of these are things you can't, you qualify for if yeah. you are taking these different courses, that discussion needs to happen more often, I think, gotcha. especially at the counselor student level. Yeah. Jake, I like you. All right. Um, let's go to some overall experience ideas. Um, what has been the most difficult thing to navigate at IVC, and what are the biggest obstacles you have faced since enrolling at IVC? And we've heard some of them, such as getting the right courses or um, getting placed lower in math than um, we think we should have been. Yeah, Robert. Uh, for me, this uh, math 310 wasn't recognized by the Montgomery or by the post 9/11 GI Bill, but uh, Voc Rehab covered it. Those are just how veterans pay for school. So they really had no idea what this class even existed uh, or if it was um, part of my certificate program. Gotcha. Uh, I can also kind of speak towards that. Uh, the writing one class that I'm in is a three, basically a three part class where it's writing one, writing, uh, I forgot the other numbers, but there's three, <laughs> there's three things that you have to take 
And one of those sections, again, wasn't recognized by the GI Bill. Now, that was something that had to be worked with through the Veterans Center and the VA um, because it is required to take the Writing One class. But that the way that that all works together was not very well explained. And part of um, getting my schedule right was finding a section for the Writing One class that also worked with these core requisite classes. And the core requisite classes also had very small class sizes. Mm. When they're not, they were tied in the computer, in the, in the admin side, this core requisite class was tied with a specific writing class. Right. When that core requisite didn't really, it doesn't really matter which one you're enrolled in because they're all the same. It's just done, it's an extra, you know, outside of class type of tutoring thing. So kind of fixing some of those admin things would probably help with that. And then also kind of speaking toward the admin thing, when I first registered uh, and went to process payments and all that stuff, it had me registered as an out-of-state student. Mm. And I've lived in California my entire <laughs> life. I mean, at, like I've been a registered, you know, yeah. in the state of California and when I asked about that, they said, oh, it's just a computer thing. You have to go to the admissions office and get that straightened out. Now, I don't know if, that, if that's actually what happened or if there's something with being a veteran or whatever, you know, going through that process. But if that's happening to a lot of students and they see, you know, that, that out-of-state tuition cost. Right. If, it's, yeah, if they're not. It's frightening. You know, oh, yeah. Because <laughs> it's almost like three times the amount or something like that for out-of-state tuition. So that, just kind of going through those things, and I guess if there were a, a way to give that feedback uh, that was you know, easier and more streamlined than coming to this panel, right. if, there, if there was a way to give that feedback, that would probably help. Right. No, that's a great idea. Um, for me, the biggest challenge that I've had is uh, managing some expectations between me and uh, myself and, and the instructors. Um, I, I can think of a few specific ones, but the, the hardest one was with uh, my writing teacher. Um, imagine a uh, very analytical engineering guy <laughs> having trouble with what I feel is a very subjective process. Um, but uh, my oh, expert. English literature. My expectations. Uh, were to get some feedback on papers that I've turned in. And, and I've only had an N of one uh, experience, so I've only had one English teacher, so I haven't had another to compare it to, but I, I would turn in a paper and I get zero feedback. I just get the grade. Mm. And I'm like, okay, well, I didn't get 100%, so and not that my expectation should be that I get 100% on everything, but if I don't achieve a, a high score or whatever, whatever I've left on the table, whatever I'm missing, I feel like I should have some sort of feedback of how you can how, how do, what, what did I leave on the table and how do I address it? Uh, how do I know the next paper that I write for you, I'm going to improve right. or give that back to you? And it was really challenging with this teacher for me to get across to her that that's what I'm looking for. Because I'd go and I'd ask her, okay, what's your feedback on the paper? And she said, I don't do that. You need to go to the English uh, the, the thing. And I'm like, I don't think so. I'm paying you to teach me. I'm not paying you to tell me to go somewhere else to get taught how to do this. Um, besides, you spent a lot of time in the class giving us a rubric. It, it, to me, it, when I saw the rubric, I'm like, great. I know exactly how to do this yeah. because I have a very guided pathway to get to the grade that I want to get. My expectation was when I got my grade back, each box would be show, oh, you yeah. missed a point here, you missed a point there, you did very well here. Right. And then I'm like, oh, okay, now I can focus on sure. my construction of this or my, uh, my order of uh, putting out my thought in a more logical fashion right. or, or whatever it is I needed to do. But yeah. I didn't get that. And I kept going back and forth with her. Yeah. And finally, I got <laughs> back my paper with a few notes written on it. And, and at the end of the day, I mean, I got a 91%. It was an A. It was, it was <laughs> like, um, I shouldn't have been being so forceful on her. I feel yeah. bad for that. No. But it's just the way I am. I'm like an overachiever type right. person. No, and that like, makes I want to know what this is, right? And so finally she gave me back that, which still wasn't exactly what I was asking for. <laughs> I thought I made it very clear. Um, and then after that, 
I still didn't get any of my other papers back. I just got A's. Like they, they just said, you got an A on this. Yeah. And then not surprising to me, the final paper that I turned in turned out to be like a low A. Like all the other papers, right. she, it was like she gave up on wanting to address my concerns. Gotcha. And I kind of gave up on wanting to just have the conversation with her because yeah. she wasn't getting it. Yeah. So some of it's just the personal interaction. So she, as a way of avoiding me, she just gave me 100% on all these papers. Yeah. Which I'm not encouraging this as a strategy to any of the other <laughs> students here, That's but. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah. And then, then Raina, you had something you uh, wanted yeah. to add? So I guess my, my biggest thing here is um, I've had a lot of like ups and downs, you know, um, being a young mom, it's been some heck of a ride, but um, having pers like a lot of personal things have happened to me that have stopped me from wanting to come to school or unfortunately just stop coming to class. And I think it'd be really nice. Um, so I've had to do two appeals already. So cross my fingers, I passed my math class. <laughs> um, but I think taking into consideration like stuff happens to students and if you're not, okay, let's say unfortunately you have a death in your family and that takes a toll on your mental health. Why should I have to appeal to that? And why should I, you know, if I stop coming to class because I'm having, you know, medical issues, mental health issues, or whatever happens to students, why should I have to appeal to say, well, yeah, I deserve my financial aid. Um, unfortunately, like, life happens. I shouldn't have to be reprimanded and punished for something that I is out of control. Sure, I mean, I get the sense of like, oh, you know, I just stopped coming to class, I don't really care, whatever. Yeah. Like, that makes sense, but students, you know, we're all through different parts of our life. Some of us are, you know, like little babies coming here, and like some of us are lifelong learners, and when life happens, I don't think, um, you know, being told, well, you can't get your financial aid because right. X, Y, and Z, even though, you know, this was out of your hand, you still have to do, you know, all of that. So I think like, yeah. Um, I know I think it's like state mandated or federal, you know, sure. it's a little bit different, but I think having, I don't know, just a way to like say, you know, maybe you can do more than one appeal or maybe you don't even have to do an appeal because if yeah. you show me some medical records, if you, you know, can prove that this incident happened to you, if you, you yeah. know, did this and that and say, okay, like we're here to help you not say, you know, you can't yeah. get the help that you need. Uh, let me ask this as probably our last question. Um, do you feel the school communicates well with you? Um, and if not, what areas do you think you would like to see better communications? Again, being the lifelong learner, um, this is my fourth junior college. So I started off at Golden West in Orange Coast and then started back at uh, Coastline Community College, which Coastline is the umbrella over Golden West and Orange Coast. And since I've been to IVC, I am completely impressed with the communication. Bless you. Um, <laughs> I think that the emails I get, the checking in, have you made an appointment with your, with your counselor? You need to do that every semester. Um, you are a returning student. Here are the classes we have to support you, to help you. Um, I was so impressed with that. And it, it's made me want to, you know, I've been telling my friends who we all have kids that are getting close to starting college, I was beyond impressed because I've never seen that at three different junior colleges, I've never seen that. And I think it's so important. That's part of why I believe IVC has such a high transfer rate. I know there's gonna still be people in situations that are gonna fall through the cracks. And I think that that's just the unfortunate red tape of life that happens that, you know, as you get, as you live life, you realize things happen and it's not gonna always be the course that you want. And, and I understand right. that, but to come back to this school and have this amazing communication and these amazing okay. emails and all of this. So I think there's already a lot of support here and I'm so impressed that they're taking this, this next step of wanting to even give more support. Okay. So I am 100% love the communication. Well, thank you. Anybody have similar or different experiences or observations? I mean, I agree with Christy. Uh, 
if I needed a question, you know, to a professor, I mean, they would respond literally right away. I mean, for the most part, or before 24 hours. So that's that's the good thing. Um, same with counselors. If you had any other questions, I mean, they would always answer your questions if you needed assistance with anything. So I okay. pretty spot Thank on you. with that. Great. Any other? Um, I mean, I agree with what she was saying. Okay. She was. Uh, I mean, while being here, even the events or anything like appointments, whatever you have, I usually am always up to date with it just because I get so many emails from wherever I, okay. for whatever you know, okay. stuff I guess. Any other thoughts there? <laughs> All right. Well, I would like to just really thank you guys. Your, the information you give us, your insights are invaluable because it's, you guys are there. You guys are in the trenches. You know what's going on. We're kind of on the outside looking in, trying to see what you guys need, what's working, what's not. So thank you guys so much for agreeing to be on the panel today. And if you guys could. Uh, <laughs> you guys can go ahead and sit down.